is going on Gulf Coast Nation guys welcome back to another episode this week we're taking a completely different approach to our normal episodes we're not in California anymore we're not heading out to our local beach catching big hot sharks no sir no ma'am we're putting our boots on the fiberglass that's right we're heading offshore in the boat this week to show you guys some awesome tips tricks and techniques for catching big hoss snapper let's do it Yo! We're out there, it's winter time right now, the reefs have not been pressured and they are loaded with big snapper because it's not snapper season. But the reason I'm taking you guys out there to show you these tips and techniques is to show you that they work, okay? They're a little bit different from your traditional snapper fishing approaches. We caught about 60 snapper on this trip. The only thing that changes during snapper season is something decreases and something increases, okay? The increase is obviously the pressure on the snapper spot. So your, your pressure increases and your population decreases, obviously because people are harvesting some of these snapper and they're bringing them home, which leaves less fish for you to catch. Show these pressured fish something different. If you've talked to anybody who dives around in our area, even if they're going out and diving eight, 10 miles offshore, right in the middle of snapper season, they go down and they see huge amberjack. They say huge snapper. There's still very big fish there, but they're the fish that are either smart or they're not falling for the techniques that people are doing. So let's try these out. Both of these first two techniques involve having some live bait and having some chunk bait. Now chunk bait, you can do it on the way out. You can buy a bunch of boxes of cigar minnows. That's what guys do. Take a pair of scissors, cut them into little chunks, chunk them up in a little five gallon bucket on the way out. We like to just save bait from old trips. So you save bait, live bait when you get back to the dock, just cut them up into chunks, put them in a five gallon bucket, put them in the deep freezer. And then you just keep doing that. And after a little while, you get a five gallon bucket full. We keep four or five in the freezer now. So when we go out on this trip, we already had a bucket full of chunks. Then we went out to our one, two mile spot, a little small reef right off the beach. And we loaded up on cigar minnows, sardines, hard tails, and ruby lips, okay? So we blacked out the live well with probably about 90 baits. For both of these techniques, blacking out the live well would be ideal. What blacking out the live well means is basically you look into your live well and there's so many fish in there, you can't see the bottom and it just looks dark, blacked out with, uh, with bait fish. So once you get that, let's head offshore. Now this first technique is free lining live bait, but it involves a little bit of work before you put your bait in the water, okay? Now some of you guys have heard, you know, not you're familiar with chumming or trying to, you know, throw chunks in the water to bring fish to you. Um, in the summertime, most of you guys know exactly what that's gonna mean. It's gonna mean bringing sharks along as well. Once the sharks show up, it's tough to get snapper through the sharks. They're gonna cut you off, eat your fish, very frustrating stuff. It's chunking, and yes, it is very similar to tuna chunking. It's almost the same technique, but uh, when you get out to your spot, what we like to do is we like to take a couple handfuls of those chunks, toss them in. We were fishing this today in 90 foot of water. Um, we've done this technique up to 300 foot of water with very large success, pulling amberjack and snapper up off the reef right to your boat. And um, what we like to do and what I like to do is use a pretty heavier setup here. So this is a Makaira 20. All right, it's a little bit smaller than a 30 wide. It's lined with a thousand yards of 80 pound braid with a pretty decent size um, amount of 100 pound mono on top on a uh, just a short 5200 star rod a little roller tip there now yes this is a tuna chunking reel this is for yellowfin tuna but it's going to work just fine for snapper big amberjack um, when you're live baiting around the boat you also have your chance of running into african pompano blackfin tuna bonita cobia that kind of stuff come up comes up off the reef in the summertime so i like to be prepared if you're gonna hook into a 20 pound snapper, if you're gonna have a 60 pound amberjack or a 50 pound cobia, grab your bait. I'd rather be overgunned than undergunned, especially if there's happened to be shark in the area. You can get this thing. Um, they can hoss them in quick, put a lot of drag on them. So I'm gonna take my 100 pound mono. I'm gonna go down right to about a eight or nine aught circle hook on a live bait. Now the bait size I prefer is anywhere from probably five to nine inches. Okay, your bigger hardtails and stuff like that are gonna work great. Ruby lips, you can catch them right off the reef. Okay, ruby lips are a fantastic bait. Really the best bait is the bait you can get your hands on except for crazy fish. Um, can't remember right now what other people call them, but there's the, they're the flat fish, they're real flat and they're shiny. 
don't use those. I don't know why. They're just, they don't work. They don't work. So get your live bait. And what, what we like to do when we get up to the spot is you're going to take your bucket of chunks and you're just going to throw in five, five, six chunks. And then you're going to throw in five, six more. About every 10 to 30 seconds, just keep chunking it. What that do, is doing in the water column is basically, obviously, those chunks are free floating on the way down. Even in high winds and heavy currents, they're just going to be floating in a steep angle. They're going to get down to the reef. And what happens is, is those snapper they're, you know, that are either leader shy or been pressured a bunch, they're going to see these free floating chunks. And they might be kind of, ah, I don't know about this at first. But when they see some another fish eat them with no repercussions, those smart snapper are going to start eating those chunks. Now, on a given reef, you could have anywhere from 10 snapper on these chunks to 100, 150 snapper that are eating on these chunks. So if you only throw five in when they get down there, five are going to be eaten quick, even if there's 10 snapper. It's only, it's only one, you know, half of them haven't eaten yet. So the next five chunks are coming down and they're going to go up a little bit to try to beat the next snapper to it, right? So they're going to go to the next five chunks that you threw every 30 seconds apart. So they're five, 10, 15 feet away. And they're going to keep following that little chunk slick, not a chum slick, chunk slick up to the boat. And then you're going to start to see them. Obviously in 90 foot, you're going to bring them up quicker than you would in 200 feet, but it still works the same. So when you start seeing snapper, amberjack, mangrove snapper, that kind of stuff up around the boat, what we like to do is we get our dip net, dip about five, 10 baits, put them in your hands and just spray them. Spray them out across the boat. The live baits hit the water. They're gonna start going crazy. And now those snapper are engaged in a war of catching a live bait. So they're gonna start chasing them and stuff like that. Next thing you do, take your circle hook, no weight, no nothing, put it on. And with that, you know, whatever you want, you don't have to use a reel this big. I just like to do it because again, I don't wanna I don't want to lose these fish. I'm just flipping them out there, letting them hit, and I'm just freelining them, giving them a little bit of slack, a little bit of slack, letting them run, letting them run. If you see a snapper start to chase them or an amberjack start to chase them, I just hold the spool and let him, you know, basically on a leash so he can't run. And then he's going to get swallowed down, let him eat for probably a three, four, five count. Three, two, one. Push it, and with the circle hook, just real pressure into him. And from then on, enjoy the fight, just like this. Now that's a pretty fun technique. I have a blast live bait fishing. It's super fun, super, super effective, especially for those bigger snapper. I mean, you can't beat, if they eat fish, you're just putting a live fish out there. But there are days when 100 pound mono is way too much, 60 pound mono is too much. They're even leader shy up to 40 pound mono. And so it can get kind of tough to get those fish to eat properly and that's when we're going to go into our next technique maybe you can't even find live bait which is definitely a, a real scenario for the summertime you just can't find live bait so this is still involving our chunk bucket right again you can just go buy a couple boxes of five pound cigar minnows five pounds of cigar minnows and then just cut them up on the way out and this is going to work just fine but you're in the same technique right you're throwing your chunks and throwing your chunks and you see the fish coming up around the boat i like to take our goo fish rods now these goo fish rods are built for slow pitch jigging, so it's not the conventional, traditional use for these rods, but you can find these rods on goofish.com. This is the blue heavy version. I absolutely love this. And this is really for when those snapper get leader shy. Now, if you don't have live bait and the fish aren't being leader shy and you still wanna use this technique, you can use the same technique on heavier gear with 60, 80, 100 pound mono on your bigger conventional or bigger spinning reels and put a lot of heat to them. Slow pitch jigging, we use 30 pound braid to a 40 pound or 30 pound mono leader. Most of the time when I'm doing this technique for snapper, I'm using 40 pound mono, uni to uni knot, to a uh, probably a five-aught or a four-aught circle hook, probably a five or six-aught circle hook there. So. 
What you're going to do is you're going to do your same thing. You're going to be chunking, chunking. Sometimes they come up if they're being shy. Sometimes they won't. But you're going to mark them on your graph. They're going to mark them on the graph coming up. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your circle hook and um, you're going to take your chunk bait. And the chunk bait that you're going to put in is going to be a little bit bigger. Cut yourself a bigger section, whether that's you're cutting live bait or uh, dead bait into smaller chunks and then cut yourself a three, four inch section. And you're going to take that circle hook right in the meat. You know, you got your skin and then you've got your meat and you're going to stick that circle hook really soft in the meat all the way in to where the circle hook cannot be seen at all. It just looks like a piece of mono is coming out. Okay. And then what you're going to do is when you throw your five chunks in, you're just going to undo, put your bait in the water. And what I like to do is I like to rod holder it and you're going to start pulling line right from the tip. Okay. So you're pulling line from the tip just hanging out and what that bait's doing obviously is free flowing with the other chunks and it's the same situation. Sometimes they'll hit it right next to the boat because they're up and high. Um, sometimes they're holding really tight to the reef and they're only waiting for those chunks to come down to the reef. Um, and in that case, you're just going to keep pulling line off the reel. You can put the clicker on or you can put it at low drag because obviously you don't want to backlash your reel. If you're doing with the spinning setup, no problem at all. And um, when you're pulling line off, you don't want to ever get tight on your bait. You want it looking as natural as possible floating down in the water column. If at any time you kind of put a little pressure on the bait and it does kind of that thing backwards, if they're being real leader shy, they're not going to eat that bait. They're going to say something's wrong with it, whatever. So, but you obviously don't want too much slack in the water. So you don't want to pile up a big slack in. It might, you know, tangle up or something like that. So just keep, keep a little bit of slack on the water, a little bit of extra line there. And then what you're looking for is you're looking for that line to kind of go. Now, again, this is the similar technique, exactly technique, to tuna chunking, right? It's just on a smaller scale, but it works perfect for these snapper that are being really finicky or really leader shy, or they've just been pressured all summer long. So when you're putting the line off, peeling the line off, and you see it start to go, I grab my reel, I'm gonna put it in free spool, turn the clicker off, whatever I need to do, and I'm gonna watch that slack. I might pull a little bit of line, pull a little bit of line, and then you're gonna feel it all come tight, and it's the same thing. It's a three count, two count, whatever, or, uh, or you can just pull some slack off and engage your reel, wait for it to come tight. Real tight, I wouldn't give it much longer than that, especially since it's a small chunk. Um, with those circle hooks, they should set right in the corner of that snapper or amberjack's mouth or mangrove snapper or whatever you're catching. But you're going to go ahead and engage your reel, reel into it, and uh, the fight's basically on on this light tackle. It's super, super fun. Obviously, you can't horse them with this, especially if it's a you know, 15, 20 pound snapper, 20, 30, 40 pound amberjack. You might lose that fight with this, and you might lose it to sharks even if you're winning. Um, but when they're being leader shy, this is how you get bites, and uh, it's really fun. Check it out. guys i hope you guys enjoyed this week's episode i hope you got something out of it we wanted to share this information with you guys because we want to see you guys catch big fish all right so go follow us on instagram follow us on facebook if you guys go out there and use some of these techniques man and they're working for you and you're loving it send us a message we love sharing information with you guys because we want to see you guys catch bigger fish so if it's working for you guys send us some pictures we'll post it up well, uh, we love hearing back. We love hearing feedback from you guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I really do. Hope you guys got something out of it. If you did, be sure to give us a thumbs up. Drop a comment below. Share with your friends. And I'm talking like, copy this link and share it with your friends. And then we'll catch you guys next week. Yo!